one. Okay, good. I'm glad we're recording. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the PR session for the TLI today. The goal here is to learn some PR strategies. We might be talking about things that you already know, but in this session, we'll have the opportunity to delve into them more deeply and interactively. We can kind of share our experiences of what we're doing at the club level. And I have a list of things that we're working on at the district level to further promote what we're doing here. And we're working on it. We're kind of easing the, into the transition of things and learning all the social media channels and making sure that everybody has proper access and all of that. But we have some big plans for this year and um, some great ideas for marketing and PRing our efforts at the district level. And these are some things that you can do at the club level. Now I understand clubs might not have as big of a budget as the district itself, but a lot of the things that we're doing are free or very low cost and we can work with you. What I really wanna make known and understood today is that I, as the PR manager, can be a resource for you at the club level. Don't be a stranger. Any questions that you have, any help that you need, it is my job to help you. It's not just about me doing PR and social media and website development and all of that for the district. That's just part of my job. The other big part of what I'm doing here is helping all of you take advantage of these efforts at the club level. So we're all in different places in terms of our club growth and development, in terms of membership, in terms of achieving goals, in terms of interacting with our members, and, and that's okay. I'm just going to kind of go over a list of things that we're planning or that we're doing and that you can implement regardless of where you are in your development or how many members you have. I think these strategies can certainly help. They can't hurt. And feel free to ask me any questions. We're going to have a Q&A part. A large part of this session, like I said, is going to be interactive. So we can we will have some time today to kind of, if you're willing to share, get a sense of where you're at and how we can help you at the district level. So one thing I, I really recommend that we're doing at the district level that I can't stress enough is regular posting on the social media channels. You might be thinking, well, that's nothing I didn't know, and I should probably go over to the East Conference room and get some laps because this is all stuff I already know. But the, the reality of the situation is we can never say too many times how important it is to do regular posting. It's very difficult to gain traction. As a magazine publisher, I tell my advertisers that you got to run at least three to six times to start getting traction. And the same thing applies in the digital world. You have to be posting regularly if you're going to start getting attention or any traction. And you might think that your Facebook page doesn't have that many likes or that many engagements. Uh, but regular posting is one way that we can really grow that. So all the social media channels that we have, and we have a lot of options nowadays, mainly Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok is kind of the newcomer on the block. And there are others and others. I mean, you can use Pinterest. There's different pages and it, there, there are different platforms that you can use, but those are the main ones that most people are visiting and most people are talking about. They all kind of serve a different purpose. And that's why it's important to give attention to each one. And for a nonprofit, for a club like this, it's not like a business. I, I would say, you know, make sure you're posting at least every couple of weeks, every month. Do it as often as you can. There's ways that you can automate it. That might cost money, I understand, if you don't have it. Delegating those tasks to other members of the group. You know, the uh, VP of PR can build a team if you have the numbers or the willingness of people to do that. Uh, but, you know, one platform is Facebook, keeping the page updated regularly, maybe starting a group where members of your club can have discussion and can prepare for the next meeting and the public can kind of get a glimpse of what you're doing in a hands-on manner. LinkedIn is really important for Toastmasters because if you think about it, one of our big goals in this organization is to help people who are in the career mindset, who are building careers, who are trying to get a, trying to get a job. A lot of people join Toastmasters when they want to gain interview skills, when they want to gain speaking skills for presentations at work. LinkedIn can be a really effective platform for gaining new members and keeping current members engaged. 
uh, posting content on LinkedIn of what happens in a meeting or giving speaking tips, leadership tips, presentation tips. It's all very important. Uh, Twitter is also a good one. What's good about Twitter is, is it keeps it short. It forces you to keep it short. And with people's attention span shrinking and shrinking, I think Twitter is a very effective way to get messages out there about upcoming events, about speaking tips, and it gets people, uh, it whets their appetites for more. So we want to stay on Twitter and try and post as much content on there as possible. I know that's something we're working on at the district level. And then Instagram is a good one because it's very visual and a lot of people are visual and it's a great opportunity to share pictures and things that happen at the club level, share logos and images. And those things tend to whet people's appetites. I know they get my attention. Uh, TikTok being a newcomer is, is good because you need to take advantage of all the newest platforms. And when a social media platform is new, it gets a lot of attention. So you wanna make sure that you're on there and posting videos regularly. We're all kind of learning TikTok. There's, there's a level of a learning curve there. But there are all kinds of instructional videos on how to make great use of TikTok. And I recommend that you look for those on YouTube or you ask people who have experience with TikTok. And when we open this session for more interaction, I'll ask and try to get your experience level because you could probably be helping us at the district level. We can all learn from each other. So Facebook and LinkedIn are two of the, the main ones that we use. And Facebook tends to be more fun and social, while LinkedIn tends to be more business and career focused. A lot of people in Toastmasters own their own businesses and they want to learn how Toastmasters is going to help them in their sales process, in their marketing, in their presentation and interacting with their employees. So LinkedIn is, and Facebook, I would say, are the ones to prioritize because we only have so many hours in a day and those two are the ones to prioritize. And like I said, there's ways to automate this and share responsibilities. If you attended the VP of PR training, I'm sure they talked about how it's not a job for just one person and you need to build a team and have different people doing different social media sites and offline activities because PR is a multifaceted big job. There's a lot involved. If any of you have ever worked in a PR role in a company or have served in PR in any community settings, you understand that there's so much to be done and there's so much to think about that you really do need a team. And at the district level, we're fortunate that we have a team, that we have people who are here to help us. And I would say that you need to build teams within your clubs. Uh, some ways to do that is it's, it's very beneficial to take on a PR role in Toastmasters because these skills that you can learn through the various learning curves can apply to your day job. You know, I, I know that as PR manager, I've already been able to bring a lot of strategies into my company, which have which has helped us grow. And you can do the same. So there's great benefit in taking on a PR role or helping with PR in your club. Another thing I want to stress is doing somewhat regular emails through a platform like MailChimp or Constant Contact. We use MailChimp at the district level. It's very easy, very user-friendly. You don't have to be an expert. Uh, you just put in a logo and you put some content and you can send it out to everybody in your club, no matter how big or small. And it's very effective because people will get the emails on a weekly basis. We're trying to send out ours weekly. Um, I know that that might be too often for a club. You might want to lower that to every two weeks or every month, but some kind of weekly, some kind of regular email is very important because a lot of people don't check their promotions tab or it just kind of piles up. Sometimes it might even get deleted or it might become gray mail, but there are a lot of people who will look at that and it shows great effort. It shows that you're an active organization and it builds trust with your environment of listeners, whether that's current members or prospective members. Uh, that's something we can help with at the district level. I'm sure you can find people in your club who are very adept at writing and editing 
Um, people in Toastmasters are usually very good communicators and they not only speak well, but they write well and edit well as well as well. So you want to get the best writers to do MailChimp and try to get it out there on a somewhat regular basis. Uh, you want to build a network of influencers. This could be past, current, or prospective members, visitors, people in the community. I know that one club I belonged to several years ago had a very strong connection with the local chamber of commerce. And getting people in the community to talk about it on their social media pages, on their videos, to write testimonials about it. Uh, building a network of influencers is very important. It's critical in this day and age to really PR or market anything successfully. So that's one activity where you can engage everybody in your club. Uh, VP of PR, like I said, it's not a lone role. You really have to work with everybody in the club, whether they're on your team or not. And see if you can get people making a good plug for your club. That's important. Uh, blogging is another great thing that you can do. You can connect a blog to your club website and you can write about things speaking related or if your club has a niche, maybe your club has a leadership niche, maybe your club has a business niche, maybe your club is part of a company. If you're in a corporate club, you can use that blog space to write about how the Toastmasters platform helps people in your company, how it helps people in technology, how it helps people in the financial industry, how it helps people in biotech. Okay, so there's lots of different niches that our clubs represent. I'm part of a generic community club, but every club culture is different and blogs are a good opportunity to build a network of writers or you as the PR VP of PR person can do it yourself. It's a great way to engage with your audience. Another thing that we're working on at the district level, and I realize that this might cost money, and I know that clubs usually don't have a lot of money, is search engine optimization. You want to be appearing at the top of the search results. You want to focus on your club's niche. You want to focus on those keywords. And there are ways that you can grow SEO organically, and we can consult with you and talk to you about that. But Google is the top search engine, as everybody knows. People, When people want to look at things, want to look things up, they're going to go on Google. They're going to go there before any social media site. They're going to go there before Meetup. And we have a strong presence on Meetup. But, you know, Meetup is an older platform. So you want to make sure you're at the top of the Google results and try Googling your club. See where you stand. And that will give you an idea of what steps you need to take and who you need to talk to about it. Press releases. Uh, that is public relations. And I, I've written a lot of press releases being a publisher of magazines. I edit and, and do a lot of press releases every month, every quarter. Um, these press releases that you come up with for your club won't necessarily be printed or featured in print media outlets, though you can do that. If you have relationships with media professionals in your community, you could certainly do that. There's no guarantee that, that the press releases will be featured because they're often inundated with materials, but coming up with a solid press release, a good one page that kind of covers the who, what, when, where, and why, that covers your happenings, events that are coming up, and what your club is all about can be an effective PR strategy. And uh, because I have such a, a strong background with press releases, I at the district level can help you either write one or get one polished and get it distributed to some good outlets. And press releases or parts of them can make good social media posts. So every club should have at least one good solid press release in its back pocket to send out whenever it's necessary. And you can tweak it. Once you have a template in, in place, you can kind of tweak it so that it can meet the needs of various media outlets, whether print or digital. Um, Press releases are very important. They're the backbone and the essence of what public relations is all about. All right. And then the club newsletter. And, and club newsletters are important because this is something that you can win a Golden Quill Award for. Um, I, I just got a question. And, and I was going to take questions at the end. But I, I feel like I want to take this question now. Is there a cost for press releases? Usually not unless you want to use a service like PR Wire or something where you're going to pay them to disseminate it for you. But to write it and to post it yourself on social media channels, 
or to have us work with you or to put it in local publications. No, there's no cost for that. Uh, there, there shouldn't be a cost for it unless you're using a service to help you distribute it. Okay, so that's that's my best answer. Okay, so going back to the club newsletter, this is an important one because this is something that you can earn an award for and it's very competitive. A lot of clubs enter and there's a lot of really good newsletters out there, but the sad reality is, is we don't have enough contestants every year. A lot of people just forget about this contest because they don't think they're good enough or they don't think that they have a chance of winning. Whether you win or not, whether you come close to winning or not, I encourage you to enter the contest because you can't get a sense of where you're at until you try. So a few things you want to have in place to build a good solid newsletter is you want to get some writers. And I recently did a newsletter in Peninsula Toastmasters somebody made this their project it used to be called a high performance leadership project now in pathways it's called something else but it's the equivalent of that somebody made it their main project like their thesis for getting their dtm and it would be good if you could get somebody in your club to do that but that's not guaranteed you likely won't get somebody to do that but it's really not a difficult project a newsletter doesn't have to come out that often. It could even be a once a year deal if you want to, but you want to find people in your club who can and are willing to write good articles. And you want to have graphics in your newsletter. I've dealt with some newsletters over the years that are pretty dry. They're just words on paper and they might have a lot of good contents, but they're not engaging because they lack photos and graphics and illustrations. And like I said, people have short attention spans. They're going to need to see some graphics to whet their appetites. Um, putting together words and graphics can be kind of difficult, and that's why you need a good layout person. But not every club will have a strong graphic artist person or somebody with that kind of a background. So there are plenty of templates. Even if you go to Pages, um, if you have Apple Pages or even Microsoft Word now, I think some of the later versions of Microsoft Word have newsletter templates. Using Canva, and there might be a charge for that. In fact, I think there is a charge for that. But if you use Canva, um, that, that could help you get a newsletter done. There's lots of ways that you can work with a newsletter and get templates without spending a lot of time and money on layout and production, okay? This, I, I go back in this industry a long way and I, I dealt with this kind of stuff long before there were things like Canva or long before word processing programs had templates. I remember when word processing programs were simply word processing programs. So, you know, I, I, I'm old enough to remember that. But nowadays, we're, we're very fortunate that we have programs like Canva and we have lots of templates. Even if you Google template for newsletter, I'm sure there are items that come up and that are of no charge or of nominal charge to you. The website is another important area of PR and something that you can win an award for later in the year. Uh, websites are very important because if you're gonna invest time, money, and energy into search engine optimization, you wanna drive foot traffic to your website and you want your website to be a clear place where people can get information on all the great things that your club has to offer. You wanna make sure that your website is simple and user-friendly and that it conveys the date, time, you know, the who, what, when, where, and why of your website. And most of us are using free Toast Toast or some platform for club websites. You're not paying for your own website or anything like that. But there's a lot you can do within the platform of free Toast Toast. There's a lot you can do with your club website to get information across. When we do a contest on the best club website, we're looking for something that's clear, concise, user-friendly, modern, and that has a fair amount of information on it so that people can kind of use it as a one-stop shop for finding out information about your Toastmasters club. And it's good to have a contact form or a simple email address where people can contact you to find out information on your next meeting. So websites are important. You want to make sure your website is in top shape. You want to make sure that your members are getting the most out of your website experience. That's probably one of the most important items that we'll talk about today. And then we have videos. As everybody knows, videos are a platform that are getting more and more attention. YouTube is an important place to be. TikTok is an important place to be. 
you want to get videos out there on, on YouTube, on your website, on social media platforms. A video can be you simply talking about what your club is all about. It's pretty simple. Or you can kind of take a video of what's happening in your meeting and put it up on YouTube or on your social media channels. There's lots of different videos that can be done. And we can help you with editing videos and all of that. But I, I suggest and I recommend you take advantage of videos and audio, maybe doing a podcast or something where you interview a club member and see how their experience is going and post it as audio on your website or on your social media platforms. Uh, video and audio are important and they're engaging. Um, I'm gonna answer a question here. I just got one. Uh, about corporate clubs, what function can a Toastmasters website have for PR or other things? I don't have a website now, but I want to I want to set one up. However, I need to figure out the value propositions to convince people to help me build it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think websites can do wonders for corporate clubs because, especially in a corporation where you have a lot of employees, people are going to go to that website for information on that. But you want to make sure there's a link to Toastmasters, to your free Toast Toast, or to your website on the corporation's website. Maybe it would be listed under employee benefits or activities or something like that. Um, I would say that websites can function as a place where you get the word out there, you can send updates about your club. As far as getting people to build it, I don't know what the skills are, what the skill set is for people in your club. Do you have somebody in your club who has built websites, who knows how to build websites? Maybe there's somebody in the company who would be interested in volunteering their time and helping you out with that because this is a community organization and building it up is a good cause, helping people to become better leaders in the workplace and all of that. Um, I would say there's a great value proposition and I think you can certainly convince people to help you with that. And we can talk more offline and, and kind of consult on, you know, and give a step-by-step -step plan on how we can achieve that and make that happen. That would be right. great. Thank you. Sure. So we talked about videos. We talked about audio. Open houses uh, have historically been the go-to option for people who want to grow membership in their club. And they talk a lot about that in the club growth department, in the membership department. I'm not against open houses. In fact, I think with Zoom and with having virtual meetings, we have a golden opportunity to take advantage of open houses. We can open up our Zoom meetings to people all over the place. They don't even have to be in District 4. They can be in other districts. That might present a problem once we go back to in-person meetings, but building up a network of guests is, is important. So... I think we have a golden opportunity with Zoom and open houses in the Zoom age will be PR differently than they once were in the in-person times. Of course, we can make flyers and post on social media, but reaching out to people in your own personal network, word of mouth is still the most effective form of advertising and talking to people in your company and to people in your sphere of influence that they should attend a meeting and then having an open meeting, an open house I think can be very effective on Zoom. And we'll talk about people's experiences with that. Um, so that, yeah, open house is great, or just bring a friend day or something like that. You can call it whatever you want, but I think an open house is a great event to have. And it's one that's fairly easy to advertise. And I think you can do that in a good manner and we can help you at the district level PR open houses because What's our goal here at the district is to get more members. That's that's what we want to do. And we get more members by you going after more members at the club level. And open houses have proven to be an effective way to do that, at least for most clubs. And I think we have a good opportunity in the Zoom age. If you want to go more old school, you know, our focus is on the modern stuff. We talked a lot about videos and social media. These are not new ideas. We just have new methodologies of doing them. And, you know, I, I am a bit of an old school PR manager. If, if you compare me to some of the, my predecessors, that's not to say that I don't have an understanding and that I can't assist with online media. I, I certainly can. It's just that my belief system is still kind of, I'm not ready to completely write off the old school. 
And I think that direct mail campaigns can be a low cost way to get people in. If it's just a simple postcard to people in your neighborhood that has your social media channels listed on such a postcard and a, a Zoom link or an opportunity to join the meeting, I still think that can be effective. So if some people are laughing at me for that, that's fine. But my, my belief is still that there is effectiveness in some old methods. And then you want to have a link to your website or to your Zoom meeting on some community websites. Maybe talk to your local Rotary Club, talk to your Lions Club. The Chamber of Commerce is really a good one. And we had a, a Chamber of Commerce Club where I lived and, and that kind of disintegrated. It kind of got small. But the Chamber of Commerce can be an organization that should really be pumping up Toastmasters, in my opinion, because the program is so effective for people in the workforce and people who have their own businesses. Learning how to make these presentations and developing these leadership skills, it's crucial. So if you haven't talked to your local Chamber of Commerce, I would recommend you do that. That's something that I would recommend. So it's 1145. I have about 15 more minutes and I, I really want to give other people the opportunity to talk about their experiences. What's worked? What hasn't worked? Where are you beating your head against the wall? Is there frustration? How can I help you? You know, I, I may not know everything, but I, I can certainly help you. So uh, let's kind of open this up. Feel free to take yourself off mute, put yourself on camera if you want to, no pressure at all. And just kind of say your name, your club name, and some things you're doing and some things that you might need help with. Anybody, anybody at all. Hey, Anna Marie, this is uh, Nish. I'm from Awesome Toastmasters uh, Club here at Amazon, based out of uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Ours being a corporate club, I have some challenges in terms of how I can promote the content. We certainly cannot have uh, anybody outside of Amazon and we have limited opportunities to do promotion. For example, in my previous club, um, when we were all on site, uh, we had um, a TV, Slate and other uh, communication medium through which I was able to promote the club. But here being remote and being a corporate club, I'm looking for some of, some best practices so I can bring in more membership and create more traction. Sure, I understand. And it sounds like we have a lot of people from corporate clubs and that's great because that's kind of the future of our organization is getting people and companies involved. And I come from more of a community background. I, I own, you know, I own my own business. I'm more of a community club person. So that's more my background. I'm kind of up against the learning curve for corporate clubs too. But I would say uh, talking to your HR department and promoting it through human resources. Uh, sending out company-wide emails, if that's possible to do, and, and not just emails with words, emails like Constant Contact and MailChimp. Those are some good ways to do it. Putting a video on the company website and talking about how Toastmasters has helped you or kind of catching a glimpse of how a meeting works. Maybe do it during table topics or a fun part of the meeting where people are interested in wanting to do that. That's a lot of fun for a lot of people is being able to answer questions that are personally meaningful to them. Those are some ideas I have at, at, at the corporate level um, and making sure that others in your company like your page on Facebook, maybe going through the likes or LinkedIn connections uh, through your company and inviting them to like pages on the various social media platform. That's great. Um, one advantage of there being a corporate club is you're all kind of, it's a little easier than getting people from the community because you're already selling something. You're saying joining Toastmasters will help you on this project. It will help you make better presentations. As we're with the community, you kind of have to understand what background they're coming from, what is their walk of life. It's a little harder. So I would say you already have some built-in advantages in the corporate arena. And there's a lot that you can do in terms of gauging, engaging that audience. Uh, we could certainly talk more about it offline. We can brainstorm together, but that's, that's my best answer for the time being. Unless, and feel free to jump in here and share your thoughts on that, you know, because 
I, I don't know everything. And like I said, I don't have a corporate club background. So if anybody wants to jump in with some thoughts or ideas, they're welcome to do so. Hi, uh, um, my name is Gokul and I'm with Genetic Toastmasters class. All through my Toastmasters career, I have been only in corporate clubs. So the way we do it is, number one, we engage with our HR, like uh, Anna Marie said, and then get them to sponsor the membership fees of the employees that are putting leadership development as one of their development uh, goals for the year. So it will be a participation and membership. And then they can build smart goals around that saying, by this date, I would do L1, by this date, I would do L2 or something like that. That way it is measurable, smart goals, you know, measurable, specific, actual, real, realistic and time bound. That way this becomes a very good selling point for all the employees to uh, participate in this. Also, I'm sure like in any other corporation, you have to make several presentations you can use Toastmasters as a launching board or a you know practice session for your presentations. That really helps. And also, I'm sure you have intranet. And we have an intranet for Genentech. And at the bottom is the calendar of events. We regularly post on that, saying, hey, next meeting is on this day. Open house on this day. Contest is on this day. And then best thing is being a corporate club, you can ask HR to give you some money every year to spend. And we use that to give free lunch. Free lunch gets you a lot of audience and members. Well, those are great ideas. I mean, sure, if you can get the HR department to sponsor some of that, if they have the budget to be able to do it, I think that's a great opportunity to get yeah. people into the club. Um, all right, I see something here in the chat. Club meetings are on Box Buzz calendar for anyone in the company to see those events. Oh, okay, so Box Buzz is a platform for Box. Perfect. Yes, I mean, if your company has something like that, then use it. Make sure you're taking advantage of it. Uh, Thank you so much, Anna Marie and uh, Gokul, for your uh, thoughts and insights. Really appreciate it. Sure. So I, I have some, Mark Prince has said, I've heard of posting Zoom meeting from Link and Slack as well. Captures contact info for people who are interested so you can follow up with them. Yeah, that's great. Slack Slack is good. I mean, if you use it, I, not all organizations use Slack. I, I belong to a couple of organizations that use Slack and, and that works well, but some don't. So if you have access to it, if your company is using it, then yes, by all means, take advantage of that. Uh, Anna Marie, you can also yeah. get Slack for nonprofits. So oh. if you don't have Slack and you want it for your Toastmasters club, you can go through usually TechSoup. I think it's TechSoup.com or TechSoup.org, and you can get Slack for your team because I belong to two community clubs that use Slack. And uh, it's really handy because people can look at their phone easier than they can look at their Gmail, especially when they're at work. So just saying. Um, yeah, and my corporate club uses Teams for our meetings. And we also have our own Teams channel, as well as like, you know, different, like we have like a members and officers and a couple of others like that. And it really worked well. Any method of communicating that works for everybody is usually a good idea. Absolutely. Yes. You want to get on the platform where everybody is and Slack is often that, that option. So yes, look into Slack for nonprofits. Maybe they can give you a discount on it. I love the platform personally, uh, but I've heard some negative feedback about it as well. So if you have access to it, use it. If not, look into it. Anybody else? I, I think I have eight minutes, don't I? But we don't have to, uh, I mean, we could just socialize if nobody has anything else they want to say. Is anybody struggling with anything? Yes. I see a hand up. Katie? Uh, I think you're on mute. There we go. I double muted. Sorry. Uh, with the golden quill, is there like a website or something for that? There's information on d4tm.org, right, Tim? Yeah. 
Yeah, there sure is. And that, that email goes out several times, usually three or four times a year from our PR manager, Anna Marie. But, you know, it's we're, we're real new in the year right now. But, yeah, you have the Golden Quill, the Platinum Presents. Now, you have one for newsletter. You have one for website. And then there's one for Diamond Director, which is video. And we've had some very, very clever, you know, uh, submissions. And I, I think they're so clever in many cases, we ought to post some of them on the D4TM website and maybe we'll work on that. So thank you for that. Anything else that should be, that I should mention? Uh, I don't know, did I forget anything? Hi, Anna Marie. Um, I'm also uh, in a corporate club where Moody's 405 Toastmasters. We have been leveraging the uh, company distribution channel. We have the local office manager send uh, help us send the promotion uh, event promotion emails to all the employees here. However, I find the conversion rate is not as high as expected. For example, uh, it reaches 250 employees, but we end up having around 30 people attend our event, like workshops or special guest events. Um, and like 15 to 20 of them are already members. Uh, eventually, every time we do this, these type of events to attract new members, we get like one or two actually converted. Do you have any tips for increasing conversion rate? Well, yeah. first of all, what you're experiencing is not abnormal. I, I don't think that's, you know, it's not so bad. I mean, you're bringing some people in, 15 guests. I mean, that's pretty good. I know the conversion rate isn't where you want it to be. Um, are the emails you're sending out, are they just text or are you including graphics or some videos, maybe making a video of the club in action and putting that in the monthly email or whatever it is, that could be a good strategy. Talking to people one-on-one, -on -one. I mean, if you have some ideas of people in your company who are not part of the organization, maybe approaching those people and having coffee with them and saying, you know, this is what Toastmasters can offer you, just come try it. Uh, those are some other ideas, the one-on-one -on -one contact. Uh, are there any other ideas? Each one bring one. Yeah, that's that's good. That's a good idea. Bring a buddy day or something. I like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Elisa, I mean, you don't have to be disappointed. We have 15,000 people at Genentech South San Francisco site and 50 people at it. So it's not, you have got better success rates than we do. <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing hey Elisa one thing you might try is talk to one of the executives in your company that's based in your office and ask have them speak on how public speaking has impacted their life and their work professional life that's usually going to be a pretty big draw I mean we have a meeting at SFO with the airport director he comes and visits one of our meetings and usually brings a bunch of people along too and uh, yeah it's great and that's how we wound up finding an executive sponsor and we've had a couple of them and they've all been really supportive so that may yeah. be something you can try and just, you know, some one of your members knows somebody. If you don't personally, maybe somebody else does. Right. That's a great tip, Tim. Um, we do, we did have an executive sponsor. Um, he kind of created this club. He was the uh, first executive sponsor. He paid for everything out of his corporate uh, club for the membership fees. Um, but then uh, last year he left the company. So uh, now we don't really have a very strong um, advocate. Uh, yeah. And maybe you go find another one. <laughs> I mean, that's what we did. At the airport, we had our first one, our first uh, sp executive sponsor retired and, and we loved her to death. 
and we suggested we made an, a different suggestion. And then that person, you know, a couple of years later, moved to another organization in the city. And then we got our we actually encouraged one of our division heads to show up. And he liked it so much. And we asked him, it was like a no brainer. You're sure, can I join now? <laughs> and he has like 1300 people that report to him. So, you know, that's the kind of level, you know, where he has that opportunity to speak up and get people aligned. So yeah, that, that's the way you do it. I mean, you know, and just have them check out you guys and then you can check them out and you get some guests there in the process, so. Thank you. Bet. We, we used to go and, and make a, a quarterly meeting for about 15 minutes with the manager of our department and sit down and say, we need you to know that we're doing this and this and this in Toastmasters. And oh, by the way, uh, we're pushing also that our people are getting better at doing their jobs and communicating to the clients. And the idea was every every so often uh, we would do this, and then they would say, "Oh, yeah, I remember that." And pretty soon they're starting to come around to the meetings. Up a lot. It's Thank you, Ashley. 12, it's twelve noon, and I think we have reached the end of the session. Anna Marie, it was a wonderful session, and really thank you so much for all the tips that you gave us, the various tools that are available for us both in the community world and in the corporate world, I'm sure everybody has benefited from what you spoke. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to contact Anna Marie and I will uh, put her email ID in the chat. So that way you can contact her directly for any suggestion. And feedback link has been just provided by the tech chair, kindly fill it out. Thank you so much. Anna Mary, thank you so much again, and let's all applaud and thank her in the ASL fashion. All of you can turn on your videos so that she knows we are really awake. <laughs> thank you. you. You were a great audience. I just really appreciate this today. Great job. Just wait for the email ID to everyone. I'm sending it right now. I think that... Um... Uh, Gokul, I'm not sure, or Jennifer, I think our uh, we have our uh, town hall is going to be on this Zoom call as well. So if anybody wants to stick around, that's, that'd be great. Great. Thank you, sir. It's so exciting to see all, so many people that I know. Hi, Tim. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Hi, Gretchen, Katie, Mark, Ashley, Elisa, <laughs> Denise, Pohan, hello, hello. Jennifer. Yeah, well, I'd be naming most of the people in the room. So, yay. Hi, Birgit, <laughs> um, Tony. Somebody had a question about, um, they sent it directly to me about Pat. I, re I reposted the comment about Pat Johnson's book. Yeah. And they asked, what site is she located at? I you can that... purchase, I believe you can still purchase that book on Toastmasters International's website. Yes. Oh. I, I purchased one this week. Thanks, yeah, Mark. Yes. She, yes, literally, she literally wrote the book on corporate clubs, literally. That's and true. she's here. So don't hesitate to introduce yourself or say hi. She's our regional advisor this year. Yeah really knowledgeable too. I mean, and then there's what's in the book. And I've also attended other stuff where she goes past what's in the book. And um, that was really helpful. I mean, you know, where they need to, you know, where we need to go, you know, is, um, you know, it's just corporate clubs are just a very different thing. And I mean, I came from one, but I've also worked in community clubs too. So it's, kind of it's very different but that's unique 